I'm David from Levique Photography and today I'm going to show you guys how to calibrate uh, for a studio setup when doing studio photography and if you want to keep the same settings all the time because of lighting that you're using maybe you shoot a lot of product maybe you shoot artwork like I do uh, whatever the variables are I'm going to show you guys how I set my system up using Adobe Camera Raw 13.3 because that's just part of my workflow but uh, I've got a new lens today, and I'm going to review this uh, pretty soon. This is the Sigma 65mm f2, and I'm just going to show you guys how I do this, just to make everything as color accurate as possible. Really, it's, it's a lot easier than you think, but let's just go through the process. All right, for this, I'm calibrating to shoot artwork. So I've got my artwork lights set up on both sides, and then I've got my overhead lights up here that are also turned on. Uh, I use these after I shoot to adjust for everything. So basically what I'm going to do right now is preset the white balance on the camera. Now my A7R stays in the studio, uh, but you can actually save the preset for the white balance if you take yours out. So that way you can put it on auto and then you can go back and revert. Um, you have to look into your menu system on how to do that, but it's pretty easy. So you can see I have it set on custom one. So we're gonna go ahead and go into that. And from here, we're gonna drop it all the way down. Well, actually I'm gonna leave it on custom one. I'm gonna hit set. And then we're gonna hit the center button to capture. And right now, my exposure is set up for what it's supposed to be. And it's gonna tell me what the white balance is. Now the reason why I have to do this is I was using the Sigma Art 50 millimeter 1.4 forever and a day. That's actually a slightly cooler lens than the Sigma 65 millimeter f2. So I have to preset my custom white balance to make sure that everything works the way it's supposed to. So before all my lighting, these lights and my overheads were actually calculating at 5150. Now I'm getting 4800K. So whatever, that's fine. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and hit enter. So now that's our preset white balance. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take a shot to actually calibrate. So this is my painting chart that I actually used to do this. These are actual paints because when I shoot artwork, I want to make sure that I'm capturing everything. This is obviously upside down, but you can see I've got acrylics, oils. These are all oil paints, watercolors, whatever. And then I'm using my color checker. I'm not actually going to use the color checker to set the color, uh, but I'm going to use it to adjust the color manually. The reason why is I discovered that um, I shoot in Adobe 1998 and the color checker profile um, for the color checker does not actually work in Adobe 1998. It only works in sRGB. So we want a wider gamut, so therefore we have to manually adjust. And this lens is not perfect. It's actually slightly flawed, but it's still the sharpest lens that you can actually put on a Sony camera. So we need the corner to corner sharpness at f11. That's the goal. That's what I usually primarily shoot at. So that's what we're going to calibrate this for. So from here, I'm just going to autofocus in and then I'm going to turn off my overheads because I use these side lights right here that are polarized to actually shoot artwork. So in shooting artwork, I want to be slightly overexposed. So 0.3, that's pretty much where I want to be. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and take a shot. Now I've got this set up on a timer. So that way there's no vibration in the camera. Now I'm going to show you how to calibrate camera raw. All right, so I just shot this with a custom white balance. Now I already have a calibration in here that I'm going to have to reset. So we'll do that really quick. So here's what my image looks like. And basically it's showing up as Adobe Color and for my white balance I'm going to put As Shot. And you can see right here it's 4850 at plus 22. That's pretty much what it was. Now as far as how accurate that looks to the actual piece. So my monitor is actually calibrated. Uh, both of these are even though they're different sizes and different brands are calibrated to each other. But anyway, um, what I'm doing is 
my setup is right here and so from here I can come in and calibrate it to my monitor here and so this pretty much has to match identically and I'm going to use the color checker and I'm just going to set it in front of the monitor here so you're not actually going to be able to see that but anyway um, basically I need to get this to match and you can see right now even on this little screen of the GoPro that the uh, the adjustment even though I did a custom white balance it still needs to be slightly warmer to match the overall lighting so we're gonna go ahead and do that and then make some other adjustments the first thing I have to do is fix the lens now I'm gonna review the Sigma 65 millimeter and 45 millimeter f2 uh, in a later video but both of those lenses have a slight flaw and that is that they have barrel distortion and a little bit of vignetting but for the sharpness of this lens at f11 it's pretty much unbeatable so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that really quick so we're gonna go into optics you can see right here that I've got user profile uh, corrections I'm gonna check that and the correction amount is not enough on the distortion. I already know that this has to be 135. My vignetting is also not enough on here, also has to be 135. Now believe it or not, this is gonna work great. And then under basic, now I wanna get this color temperature just right. So with this, I'm actually gonna use this second box. So this is closer to what I had before, just not quite as warm. So 50-50 at 17, and looking over at the actual piece, this is a very good match. Uh, contrast is where it should be, minus 10. Maybe I'll take this down to minus 15 because this lens is very contrasty. Now, contrast affects color just like everything else. So the other things that are really important to me are under detail. The sharpening uh, I like to have at 15. Now normally I think this is defaulted at like 40. So I want to bring this down a little bit. The noise reduction, I'm going to go ahead and bring this up just a little bit to right around 30. Uh, this just gives you really clean lines and then I sharpen it in post more in Photoshop after I'm done adjusting everything, if that makes sense. But basically I just don't want stuff over sharpened because that creates more contrast and also creates a slight color shift. So anyway, let's go into the color mixer here. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my, on my X-Rite color checker. Okay, so now I've got my color checker sitting directly underneath my monitor. And you would think at this point it would be pretty close, and it is, it's very close, but still not quite right. So under the hue, there's a few things that need to be changed. So basically that would be the blues. The blues are a little too vibrant in blue. My purples themselves are actually pretty good. I don't have to adjust those. Now the other one I need to adjust are the aquas. So the aquas are not quite green enough. The greens need to be slightly more yellow. My oranges, now the oranges are something that's actually slightly difficult. So with the oranges what I need to do is pump up the saturation a little bit. My reds need to be saturated just a little bit. And then the luminance of my reds actually needs to be pulled down just a touch. And then uh, my greens. So my greens need more saturation. Looking at the luminance, uh, the blues could go slightly darker. I shoot in the same environment all the time. That's the reason why this is critical. That way that's that much less color adjustment I have to do in the end. So overall, I think that looks pretty good. So anyway, from here, I've made these adjustments. Uh, the one thing that I don't want to do is do any kind of cropping because that will happen later on on an individual basis, so I'm going to leave that out. I don't have to worry about geometry, effects, or calibration. So I've tried to adjust from the calibration tab to make my own profile that way. Using the color mixer is just a lot easier. So anyway. This is pretty much good to go. So from this point, what I'm going to do is go to this tab here, More Image Settings, and we're going to go to Create Preset. So from here, I'm going to leave Geometry unchecked because I don't want that to be checked. 
everything else in here checked. The rest of the stuff will carry over every single time I open this uh, raw file from this camera. Now I'm shooting the A7R4, so I'm going to call this uh, A7R4 65 millimeter f2 and then I'm going to put the date in here so that way I remember when I did this. So 612 of 21. So I'm going to hit OK. Now that saved the preset. Now you go over to settings and then right here uh, we'll go to raw defaults and then this is my previous setup right here. Um, this is global so you can actually create a global one for different cameras or you can create a preset for just the lens. So in this case we'll do just the lens. So over here I'm going to go choose a preset I'm going to go user presets and then here's the one that I just created. So now this is loaded. So every single time you load a raw file from the A7R4 in here it's automatically going to default to this preset. So now let's give it a test and see how well this works. And all this looks good. So I can hit open. This is what I'm going to get every single time. This is opening. All right, here's my image of my preset. Now from here, I can go in and I'm going to take the same photo and I'm deleting the XMP file that's on the SD card. That way it'll default back to whatever the defaults are. And I'm going to slide this in. And what you're going to see is my settings are already there. Exactly the same way that I left it last. Doing minor adjustments on like certain pieces of artwork. Let's say somebody brings in 10 paintings that are square. Uh, if I want to save the cropping of this, let's, let's say I just go in and just crop this whole thing down really quick and I want to call this good and then just open it. Now usually I'm not this sloppy but this was the original one. This is the second one. Now you'll see that the second one is cropped. Let me go back over here, delete my XMP file again, drag this file back in and now you'll see that again it's uncropped but if I want to just do the same setting again, I can go to apply previous settings and it shows me the same image cropped again. So doing it this way just simplifies your workflow and yes you can do the same thing in Lightroom. So anyway I hope you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel for more information like this and we'll talk to you guys later. See ya!